I will, I will not talk a lot about uh, the foundation of this company and this project, but uh, just to uh, give you a full a picture, so you don't uh, see this only as an electric vehicle company. Uh, this is our, 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 our base of work, that global cities, as you know, um, um, on, are redesigning the whole uh, space and how to integrate the public transportation system with new uh, ways of mobility. The problem is that the electric vehicles that uh, uh, we have on the market at the moment and those who have been, uh, that are uh, under design at the moment, have not really been designed for that future of uh, integration with the public transportation system and they, are, they have not been designed by others than car engineers. So what we have here is the first uh, vehicle that is the first electronic vehicle uh, designed by architects, uh, also engineers, of course, but a group of multidisciplinary people trying to design the vehicle uh, of the future. So let me show you this video because I think it explains uh, a little bit uh, better what are we, t are, we t are we talking about? Uh, the c this car is a two-passenger seat uh, that has the engine on the wheels. And this is the main difference with any other electric vehicle. This car has four robot wheels that uh, makes the car capable of making maneuvers like this that a normal car cannot do. The car also has a drive-by-wire system. So that means it's pure electronic from the wire to uh, the wheels, and we have an, an direct access to the pedestrian road by a folding mechanism. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of new things in this uh, design. If we go back for a second, it's a, a two passenger seats because most of the uh, uh, journeys we have within the city are maybe one or two or two people. It, it has, it's been designed for car sharing, and I will explain a little bit more about that uh, later. But then it tries to minimize the, uh, the weight of the vehicle, and it tries to uh, take the best out of the technology that is available in terms of electronics and uh, electricity. So that's why we don't need any more a mechanical transmission. The, the current manufacturers are still making electric cars with, uh, uh, with mechanical transmission because that is what they know uh, to do. They know making cars like that. And if they need to redesign the concept of making cars, they need to fire probably half of the uh, staff they have at the moment. So this is, this is a total uh, different uh, approach to uh, electric uh, mobility. And in terms of, of, of technology, you have seen the car folding, what is very spectacular, and it has a purpose, as I will explain uh, uh, now. But um, what is really technologically, the, the folding is not the most uh, difficult part. It's actually uh, quite easy if we compare with the revolution that the robot wheel will bring into electric mobility. And uh, associated to this project, we have established uh, another company called Basque Robot Wheels that, will, that is manufacturing the robot wheels for the Rico project, but for uh, any other uh, electric car out in the market. So we make the car small and foldable because we want to uh, uh, take uh, the space, take the, uh, or make the best use of the space available in the city. And this, this is our, some projections. So if you compare the car when it's not folded and when, when it's folded in comparison with other uh, similar electric vehicles. OK, so that is uh, the city car. Um, but uh, the car is just an element of a new uh, mobility system that we are trying to integrate in our cities. Hopefully, Berlin is going to be one of the best cities to try this uh, system. So uh, let me explain you a little bit more about that. At the moment, all the car sharing uh, systems that we have have a problem of redistribution. It is the same problem of the uh, bicycle programs. 
that most of the people tend to move from one point A to point B. And then when, uh, during the day, that demand changes, there are no bicycles or, ca or cars available for people moving to uh, around different uh, points of the city. If we cannot guarantee that there are vehicles for people when we want to use the vehicles, those systems are never going to work, are not reliable, and we will still use the taxi, the private car, the buses, the trains that we know when are available. So there are very interesting programs out there here in Berlin, in many cities in, in the world, but we are preparing the next uh, generation of car sharing programs. Let's, let's call the 2.0 or 3.0 uh, programs. Um, for doing that, we are working on a software platform <clears throat> and a system that we uh, call it Mobility On Demand that <clears throat> merge the software and the connection of this car that is electronic, GPS, uh, geolocalized 24 hours with <clears throat> a, a system of dynamic pricing. How can we incentivize the user to move the car around the areas that we want the car to be ready for the next uh, customer, okay? So basically, uh, the system will, will work this way. You are in this place and you want to move to your destination that is up here. You will have a lot of different possibilities, but normally, when you book in your telephone wh where the cars are available for you, you will see that in this area, there are a lot of people trying to get a car, but they're only one car, uh, they are, the fleet is very small. So that, if you take the car there, that will cost you more, okay? But in this other area, <clears throat> there are more cars and less people waiting. So you take the car there, then you pay less. But <clears throat> once that you are in the car, you also have different options. You can take the car uh, to your destination, wherever you want to leave it, and then you will pay more. Or you have some other areas where people are waiting. If there are more people waiting, <clears throat> then you, the, your trip will cost less. If there are more cars and less people, then your trip uh, will be more expensive. Okay, this is the basic, let's, say, let's call it the basic assumption of how dynamic uh, pricing uh, will work. But this is only the beginning of a new platform that will connect uh, local uh, services, local businesses with all those users of, uh, of the fleet. Let's, let me give you another example. And I don't know if the, 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 the guy from the uh, EDF is still here because he was saying new business models. Here you have a good uh, new business model. Uh, if you're driving the car, then you can decide. I don't want to get any information. I want to drive and I want to pay for my trip. That's great. But the car will know what kind of areas of interest do you have. For example, you are looking for an apartment in that part of the city in Berlin that you are driving around here. So you can ask the car to send you a PDF with all the list of uh, apartments available with pictures and prices of the area while you are driving. And then the company that is renting those apartments will pay for your trip. Another example, if you, wanna, if you, if you, if you park the car in a restaurant, if you car, park the car in a, in a, in a big shopping center, those shops will pay for the trip, of a part of your trip, because they want you to go there. They want you to park there. They know the elements of uh, your profile that are interesting for uh, those uh, 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 businesses. Another step forward. If once that we have installed this uh, system in a city like Berlin, the system will know what happens in a day like today when this beautiful day like this, that probably is not very common, but what happens with, uh, in, in a day like this? How people behave in Berlin, what ki where, which kind of stations they use more, which kind of parts of the city are they moving to? So the system will know that and will introduce incentives according to those uh, already learned behaviors to move the people around, uh, around the city. So this project is not all about, all, only about a beautiful car that is capable of folding. It's about creating an ecosystem of mobility plus new business development that has the power to transform the way that we are moving in big cities today. Okay, but, so now you will, see, you will say, yes, very nice. That was a very good design. 
the MIT guys are very good, then it never works. Okay, well, the good news is that design is today a reality. We, we presented the first uh, fo a fully functional prototype of Irico last uh, January in Brussels with the support of the, the president of the European Commission. And uh, this, uh, after two years of development in collaboration with MIT and seven companies in the Basque area, we, are, we already have a, a, a fully functional uh, prototype, and now we are making uh, on-the-road test, and we are planning to uh, not only to test the vehicle on uh, uh, various cities, including Berlin, but also we are already drafting the feasibility study for that whole ecosystem I was telling you about. So at the moment, we have agreements with uh, the region of Berlin, with the city of Malmo, with San Francisco, with Barcelona, and with Vitoria, that is the Basque capital, a European green capital this year as well. And we are negotiating with other cities around the world to, for doing two things. First of all, we are going to be deploying the vehicle to be sure that the car is as good as any other electric uh, vehicle. Oh, by the way, this is uh, Will Lark, the designer of the car. So I normally like to say thank you for this beautiful thing. So, uh, so we, are, uh, we are going to deploy the vehicles because we want to, be, uh, to test them, not only from an uh, engineering point of view, but also we want to test the reaction of the user because probably the reaction of the user in Berlin will be this different to the reaction of the user in Barcelona or, or uh, in San Francisco. Um, by doing that test, we will also be uh, uh, testing also what to do with the vehicle. Because in that platform, in that new ecosystem I was telling you about, uh, there are new business opportunities, new business developments that we still are not capable of uh, thinking about. For example, all the applications you can use while you are driving. For example, uh, the city of Barcelona is interested uh, in using this vehicle as a tool for digital ecotourism. What, what does it mean? It means that when you arrive to Barcelona, you can get one of these vehicles, and these vehicles will serve you different routes to visit uh, the city. You can decide to go by the, by the Gothic route, you can do the gastronomic route, you can take the modern route, the Olympic route, whatever route you want to take, the car will take you around that area and it will tell you where to stay, where to eat, what things to do. So for Barcelona, this car is a vehicle for transformation of the uh, tourist industry. But there are so many, so many other options that we still uh, don't know about and we, are, we want to cooperate with other companies and organizations that would like to explore uh, that further. So this is, uh, this is what we are uh, uh, doing at the moment. Uh, the car, hopefully, uh, if everything goes well, will come to Berlin uh, after the summer um, to be tested, as I said. Uh, and we will be uh, ready to present a feasibility study to the city of Berlin and to all the partners that want to be involved about how this new eco ecosystem of mobility and new business development could work in Berlin. Meaning, not only the transportation side, see how many vehicles you need, how are these vehicles going to work, the recharging infrastructure, hello, recharging infrastructure, um, the software platform, um, but also the business case. Who wants to invest in Berlin? Who wants to, do, uh, to run this uh, new business in Berlin? Because, as I uh, didn't mention this before, this car is going to be assembled locally. We will make the seven modules in uh, mostly in uh, factories in Spain, but then the car will be assembled locally. So it means that we will be generating employment locally, and we can gen uh, generate uh, a whole new company in Berlin that will uh, be, of course, selling the vehicle, repairing uh, the, the vehicle, but also developing the, all the new possibilities around, around, around this project. So um, I, I, I hope to see you then in, in, in a couple of months. But before I finish, uh, 
I'd like to say two things. Um, well, one, of course, is that uh, we are uh, uh, looking for further investment. The, uh, the project has secured all the funding for the research and development phase, but now are in, we are in the position of uh, in preparing uh, a global uh, development uh, of the project. But um, we are not looking for any, any kind of investment, and this is uh, important for us. Normally, the investors are the one who tells what kind of investment they, they are going to give you. In this case, we say, well, uh, we need investment that understands the concept that we are trying to do. If the investment is only interested in making an electric car, there are a lot of electric cars out there. So you can go, and there are uh, very good projects on electric cars. This is something else. This is the first electronic vehicle that is trying to bring a new ecosystem for ur urban mobility. If there is somebody interested, I'll be very happy to talk to you. But also to the companies that would like to ex explore this uh, concept for new business development. On a diff very different side, utilities, energy providers, of course, software uh, developers, etc. The good news is there are already very int uh, interesting people out there like Deutsche Bahn, who is uh, talking to us about uh, um, uh, a long-term strategic collaboration partnership and, and, and many others. So if you are interested, I'll be very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Gorka. Um, do you have a question for Gorka? If yes, please uh, raise your hand and wait for the microphone. <coughs> so, how many cars do you actually need um, in a city for the system to work? Well, uh, each city, uh, that's why we need to make the, uh, the feasibility study. Each city is different, and each city has its own mobility strategy. So we, don't, we are not going to impose a new mobility strategy in, in those cities. The first thing we do is we come to Berlin, we talk to the, to the city and say, what is your strategy? What are, what, is, what are your plans? What is the part of the city that you think is most needed for a system like this? Then according to that, then we analyze the area, and we say, OK, for this area, and according to what you have already, these are the number of vehicles. Okay? And this, these are the, uh, this is the, the design for the recharging infrastructure, et cetera. So in each city, it's different. And uh, um, of course, we are not going to start, we are not going to come to a city like Berlin and say, OK, you need 500 uh, vehicles to start and then you will need to buy another 500 in the, in the next uh, two years. That, 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 that will be impossible. We will start taking a small area where we can introduce 50, 100 cars to learn how people are uh, reacting to that uh, system, and from there we will grow. So, uh, I mean, I can tell you a figure like this, but it doesn't work like that. It will be in each city, will be an, uh, a conversation uh, with the city and with the private uh, uh, partners that will be involved to say, okay, how are we going to start here? Where is the area? How many vehicles? And then according to uh, that reaction, then we will be able to, to make the, the, the final figures. All right, Gorka, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>